Computers, Animals, and Consciousness. When a computer does advanced calculations involving hundreds of steps and huge capacities of memory, it finds the answer that it has been instructed to look for without any awareness of why it is doing what it does. When it finds the answer, it stops looking for the answer. Not because it knows that it is happy to have found the answer. It stops because it possesses no additional programming telling it what to do with the answer once the answer has been found and reported back to the user. Computers are not conscious. They are not aware of what they do or why they do it. They just do what they do, then stop when they have no further instructions from their programming or the operator who interacts with that programming. They are not self-motivated. They do not know how to protect themselves. They do not know how to ensure their own survival. They don't even care about their own survival. They feel no pleasure. They feel no desire. They know no fear. They feel no anger or pain. Contrast a computer with a cat. A cat does know how to survive. It does know how to protect itself. If a cat is hungry, it looks for food. Threaten a cat, and a cat will run away. Threaten a cat's children, and the cat will fight to defend them. Cats are conscious. They are attuned to their surroundings, aware of their feelings. And if you are attentive, you will find that the cat expresses its feelings. For example, a cat might stand next to its food dish and meow to let you know it wants to be fed. Cats know what is important. They know there is nothing more important in this world than they themselves, the cat. Cats, however, are not so aware of themselves as are other animals. When a cat looks into a mirror, he does not even recognize himself. A chimpanzee, however, does know it is himself or herself who is looking back from the other side of the mirror. Elephants, dolphins, and many other animals also understand that it is their own reflection that they are looking at when they look into a mirror. They inspect themselves in the mirror. They touch their teeth and look at them. They make faces into the mirror. They inspect parts of their bodies that they cannot normally see with their own eyes. Elephants can't paint. It is their trainers standing next to them, often blocked from view, who guide the elephants to paint the pictures. But understand this, the elephant and its trainer are two creatures who have come to a mutual understanding. The elephants are not programmed to paint. They willingly cooperate with their trainers. The elephants want to please the trainers. The elephants are conscious of the trainers, and they are aware that they are drawing pictures, even though they may not entirely understand what the pictures represent. Animals aren't as smart as people. In fact, even though an elephant is smart enough to survive in the wild, an elephant isn't even close to nearly as smart as a human being. A typical computer, on the other hand, can't survive in the wild, but the best computers, when equipped with the best programs, are much smarter than even the smartest of people. Way back in 1997, an IBM computer named Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov, former world chess champion, at his own game. Computers of today are even more advanced. In 2011, another IBM computer, this one named Watson, beat the world's best Jeopardy players. And computers keep getting better. They keep getting smarter. They keep getting faster. Their thinking keeps getting increasingly flexible. But no matter how smart computers get, they'll never become potheads, or for that matter, alcoholics. They won't play air guitars, decorate themselves with tattoos, or take selfies. They won't shout to be heard. They won't have vices. They won't zone out or try to make a good impression. They won't even care how they look. Image will be something programmed into them, not something they themselves care about. Computers don't even have a self. They are raw intelligence, complex interpreters of abstract symbols who, without bodies, 
know nothing of being a living, breathing part of a world. They have no feelings, no self-identity, no sense of dignity or self-worth. They can't even feel pain. They can't be frightened. They never get impatient or frustrated. When they are physically attacked, they don't retaliate or even run away. Computers may be smart, but they are not smart enough to defend themselves when attacked with a hammer or even just a fist. Computers may be thinking machines, but they are not alive. You are just stating the obvious. Everybody knows that animals have feelings and that computers don't. We live in a digital age, and we have a sense for such things, at least if we are under 30 years of age. But if you're older than 30, you might not think that this is so right. If you are older than 30, you might have been socialized to think in an entirely different way. You see, in the old days, a generation or two ago, many people believed that animals did not feel pain. Even as late as 1989, U.S. veterinarians were trained to ignore signs that an animal was in pain. It was believed by many that animals do not have emotions. And not too long before that, the majority opinion of the best and brightest of human beings had it that animals were machines, and humans were ghosts in machines. It was believed that ascribing emotions to animals was a kind of anthropomorphism, the projection of human emotions onto what was essentially a mechanical system. It was said that if you chopped a cat in two, with a circular saw, a sword, or an axe, and the cat screeched, that what you would hear was not pain, but the sound of the gears screeching as the cat machine ceased to function. Yes, you can take an axe or a hammer to a computer, and it will feel no pain. But don't do it to a cat. I hope you cringe at my example. I hope that the thought of inflicting pain on an animal is repulsive to you. I hope that you have the same sense that I do, that to have a body is to have hunger. It is to thirst and have emotions, pleasures and pain, hopes and fears. I feel therefore I am. I hunger, therefore I am. I thirst, therefore I am. We are not ghosts in machines. Ghosts do not inhabit machines. Ghosts inhabit bodies. When you cut the cat in two, the ghost of the cat leaves the body. And the sound that you hear is not the sound of gears screeching. It is the sound of the ghost of the cat leaving the body.